Willie Mullins joins us after Hercule Dussoy took out the Grade 3 Gibneys for auction novice hurdle. Willie, congratulations. Lovely performance. What impressed you most about that? I thought his jumping was mustard, I must say. Well, well it was impressing me and was watching him going down the back. He was just getting a half length at every hurl, and when they joined him coming across the top, I thought, well, we've a length and a half in the bag because we've got going to get a half length at the last three hurdles, and he duly did that at the second last and the, la uh, the third last, but came down and missed the last. And I thought, mm, you know, Gordon's horse staying on well. Gordon's horse, I think, are a shade fitter than mine at the moment. I thought he might outstay him. Uh, but our fellow put down his head and stuck at it, and that, that's the part that impressed me, what he did after the last, after missing it. Very early days, I know, in the season, but where does this guy fit in, do you think, amongst your novice hurlers? Well, while the ground is like this, he's right up there with any of them. And we don't know how good he is because uh, he's very hard on himself. He's very hard at home on himself. As you can see, he makes the running and wears a hood. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'd be a little worried maybe when the ground gets very heavy in winter, but if we can keep him to tracks like Leperstown where the ground the last years has been quite dry, so maybe, you know, onto Christmas onto Dublin Racing Festival and then whether he takes his chance in Cheltenham or not. Uh, well, it depends on what he does, but I'd say that's the sort of place he'll go. Mm. Is he in the Royal Bond or could he run there? Yes, uh, he's there among, we've, we've a good few there, but he could, yeah. And the ground can be quite good in Fairhouse, especially this year. I mean, 17 degrees here today, the water table is very low. Uh, we, we need a lot of rain. I thought we were going to get it. I got sucked into entering my two chasers here today and then the, the thing dried up um, you know what we, we need a lot more rain as much as we've had yes I know David Casey was here early checking out the conditions yeah, David and Paul drove up early to, to walk the track and they rang me when they were at the second last and at that stage they had said there was too much good in the ground mm. I, especially I suppose with a horse like Fernie Yalo who has had an injury you don't want to take any chances uh, that's really. it I mean uh, you know he you don't want to take a chance. If in doubt, you always just pull out. That's my motto anyhow, especially this time of the season, because people will tell you it's nice on top. But when you go down underneath, you go down two or three inches, and you know when you've got a sort of a 500 kilo horse landing over a fence, going at 40 miles an hour, a lot of jar there. It goes right back up to their shoulders and everything, and you mightn't get them right for the whole season. Is there a plan B for Fernie Hollow? I'm sure it'll be easy enough to find another beginners for Flame Bearer, but what about yeah. Fernie? Um, I thought you have to look at the race down in Mallow, isn't it? You know, with the Hilly Way. Yeah, whether we go there, I don't know. Uh, Energamin or Energamin is going there, isn't it? Energamin goes there. How, how are we pronouncing it today? <laughs> if you don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Energamin, I think, is uh, how my French uh, staff pronounce it anyhow. So, um, like, he goes there all being well. And maybe our, the other fellow will just have to take his chance and go there, you know. Mm. Uh, but we'll try and find somewhere else. If I could keep it apart, I'd rather do that. Now, you are going to be represented later on at Cheltenham today by Dad's lad, who, of course, had that famous win there recently. I'm sure he's that's not going to lack for, that's lack for that's support that's anyways. That's Patrick, so uh, <laughs> he should be probably here doing the interview. He, he, uh, that's his horse. He, he bought him twice. He bought him for Pierce Me, and he won no races from him. I told Pete, Pierce to sell him, and next thing I knew, Patrick had bought him off Pierce and put, put the, the boys into him, and he's been fantastic with him. I think he's won about five, six races, maybe more. Uh, just everything has gone right for them. Um, it's tough going back there a second time in, what, three weeks? So he's in good form at home. Who knows? He, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping he'll um, surprise me again. He's, he's surprised me all the time. You had a few nice ones out yesterday, Willie. Really. Astro Diamond was a good winner of the first. I loved what she did because she came. Paul got into trouble turning for home. Uh, he was way, he was back a bit further than he wanted to be. And she stuck her head out and managed to win. Got a hard race now. Uh, so we'll see, probably, she, she's good enough to go for the Royal Bond, whether she recovers in time for that. And then the Billy in the second race, Eva, Eva Grace, ran great, not as good as the first two. Uh, probably another furlong would do her, but the experience she got from yesterday, she jumped way too high. That experience, she'll improve, and probably just a lower, one, one little bit lower grade. Uh, but I think she she'll improve as the season goes on and from what we saw yesterday she's going to make a really good chaser I think. And gentlemen to me Willie didn't perform up to expectations in the fee in the feature chase ran, what was your verdict? Ran too free uh, I thought he ran too free did way too much uh, from the time he passed the stands going down the back 
and round over the ditch. Did he miss the ditch? Um, mightn't just have jumped it as well he, as he can. He, he just he was doing too much throughout the race, and probably I, I didn't think he'd neither run, but uh, probably did neither run. He just blew up badly, so he was unlucky then to fall. But that's the way it goes. You know. I know the Tingle Creek was in your mind going into yesterday. Is that still likely to be the plan? Well, I'm happy enough to go for it. So, um, I, and I think JP will be happy enough to go for it too. You know. Um, there's enough in the hilly way, so we'll go. <laughs> we'll go <laughs> You've got to split some of them up. Yeah. No, I, I think we'd be happy to go for it, yeah. Mm. Yesterday would bring him on hugely. And Willie, just finally, how's Alaho? News came out, obviously, that he's going to miss the King George there after a yeah. setback. Not too serious, though, hopefully. Yeah, he had two little setbacks uh, <laughs> on a front leg and a hind leg, but I think they're just little setbacks, and we're going to need a few weeks to get them right and get them back going. So there's no point in trying to... Um, Aim for the King's yeah. like So, I mean, we've one day in mind, you know, in Cheltenham uh, in March. So, w- if I can get him back, our, our veterinary opinion says, you know, he needs whatever time. So, we've, we'll give him that time and mm. we'll take it from there. Is there kind of a best case scenario? What would be the earliest you might see him back on the track? Uh, whether we get a run in for Cheltenham, we might get a run in before Cheltenham, yeah. Mm. So, we'll see. Great stuff. Willie, as always, thanks for your time and best of luck later on. Thanks. Cheers.